Good morning. The United States fracking industry is going to produce 41,000 barrels per day, more than it did uh, in, in, in January. So that is February plus 41,000 versus January. Um, if that is going to last, it could mean that by year end, the U.S. oil production could have risen by 500,000 barrels a day. So that's half a million barrels. The Fed, uh, the, not, not the, the Federal Reserve, it's not the Federal Reserve, it's the OPEC that wants to cut production by 1.5 million barrels a day in January, so this month, and non-OPEC um, oil producers already announced that they will join with an additional 600,000 barrels a day. So the US production could, if it really runs uh, smoothly, all but... Um, cancel out the non-OPEC production cuts almost at least and that was yesterday the uh, reaction of the price of oil was going down because of the fear that um, the US production increase would somehow mitigate the effect of the OPEC and non-OPEC production cuts on the weekend there would be a so-called compliance meeting where those that have uh, talked to and, and said that they want to cut production within the OPEC and those that joined outside of the OPEC will meet, or at least a member of staff of the cartel of the OPEC will meet to watch for compliance. The Canadian dollar tumbled yesterday in a rare occasion these days where everybody's talking about more normalization of monetary policy. The Bank of Canada um, announced that it might do a rate cut because there is um, uh, excess capacities in the industry that need a stimulus to be filled and the Trump effect of have, will have a uh, GDP boost of 0.1% um, in this year. Or at least they expect that this will come, but that's not enough to fill these capacity gaps and um, uh, the fiscal stimulus that the Canadian government initiated wasn't enough, so the press is saying, and so they need more rate cuts and more easy money coming from Canada and that was moving the Canadian dollar uh, strongly down yesterday. US inflation, as we've, um, as we've uh, came to know, has been moving up every, every, um, every month since February of, of last year. Now we've got the fifth consecutive increase in uh, inflation numbers, the rent inflation has been going up by 4%. Real earnings um, um, are plus 0.2% year over year. And that is a stark um, difference. So we've got year over year um, inflation of 2.1%, but real earnings are going up by 0.2%. That's the slowest in almost three years. Then there was another... Um, almost scary study, research study, um, about the year 2015 in the United States, life expectancy rate uh, times and life expectancy has been going down as the first month since 1993. Back then we, hit the, we had the HIV crisis and AIDS crisis. Today we don't have that, but life expectancy is going down and infant mortality rates are going up. Then there was another study saying that the upper 10% of the income ladder live 14, so that is one for 14 years longer than those in the lower 10% of the income ladder. So that is income inequality and one reason why Trump has gained so many votes and why he will be inaugurated tomorrow as the next president of the United States. So when you watch the uh, profit developments of the US companies, um, the third quarter has had the first uh, increase in earnings um, after five quarters of earnings declines. The current quarter, our current earnings season for the fourth quarter is showing gains as well. So that is one reason why the market is actually uh, going up, why Wall Street is so strong. It's not only Trump but it's also the earnings development which has turned positive again.